Okay, I had sent out a questionnaire or essentially a survey to all the state DOTs and they were um, kind enough to submit their responses back and what I just handed out were the responses and I tried to include everyone's responses that were available. And what I had done was I went and um, compiled all the information into some slides and what I'd like to do uh, is have uh, rotate through um, the states go each state or each question will have about three states answer their or provide a response to uh, the question just so everybody can understand where the answers came from and, and where some of the things um, where the data is actually uh, from so um, as I said nine questions um, the answers were compiled and we're going to discuss the answers and at the end we also asked if there was a, a website for either um, uh, dashboard or any type of uh, performance measures and we'll just kind of hit a couple of those I got it so uh, we, we can have actually have access to the internet so we can actually see those up on the screen so the first question was does your organization have performance measures and if yes what are the performance measures so what we're going to do is we're going to go in alphabetical order and so we're going to start off um, under this question Connecticut Delaware and Maine are going to answer these so starting off with Connecticut, um, but before I do that, here's the, here's the a summary of all the answers from the states. All the answers have performance measures, okay? So if Rich could uh, talk about Connecticut and, and their response, let me get, I need Ed down here so he can be running for me. All right, as far as performance measures, yes, Connecticut has them, as it's been alluded to by Dennis on the board. One of our measures is a percentage of uh, bridges in a state of good repair, and we are not using the number seven from the MBI for that data. Are you using six? I think we're using five. All the way down to five, okay. Um, now, the other thing, we have two other performance measures, and they apply primarily to our bridge maintenance work. One is the number of bridge work items completed, and the other is the number of work of backlog bridge work items, knowing what the pending backlog of needs are. Mm -hmm. This is the, the performance measures are routinely done by the department on a quarterly basis. They are posted on the web, the web address that's noted further in. Okay. Uh, however, on the two that apply strictly to the maintenance operation, we, t we tally these numbers by district monthly. So we are, and we've done this for a long time. So it gives us a good feel of what's going on. That's good. Okay, um, next response will be from Delaware. Yeah, they go for it. In Delaware, uh, we, our performance measures are um, less than 5% for SD, and that's anything MBI four or less. And then also less than 25% for fair and poor, so MBI five or less. And that's number of bridges, not deck area. So. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to Maine next. I'm going to give it to John because I can't read that many words. Neither can I, but uh, I'll give it a try. Uh, yeah, Maine DOT, uh, as far as the bridge world, we've been using uh, age, uh, structurally deficient, NBI condition. Of course, uh, when you vet all this stuff, you always go through a, a process of what the structure type is, the criticality of it, uh, materials and all that. Uh, and in 2010, the Maine Department of Tran Transportation, more for, for a highway and pavement, started to look at customer service levels based on safety, mobility, congestion, and all that stuff. And, and uh, we, we broke it into highway quarter priorities like similar to New Hampshire, interstate down to local roads, and then also based on the serviceability condition and all those factors, give it an A, B, C, or a D. Uh, that was developed originally for pavement, and then they tried to jam the bridge world in that, which is a little more difficult. So it's just kind of a compilation of, uh, of all the all the different factors, age, structurally deficient, uh, like I had said before, Maine doesn't consider a, a, a condition state four of a deck to be a poor structure if the rest of the structure is in good condition. But 
it depends where that condition floor is. If it's on the interstate or if it's a uh, grade separation type structure, then it would take higher priority and be taken care of. Okay. Okay, very good. Okay, let's go to the second question, which is how many years have you been gathering performance measure data? Okay, now here's a just kind of a graph of, of what all the states have responded, or at least my interpretation of what the response was. Um, New Hampshire's been, seemed to be uh, collecting the data for the longest time, and Rhode Island is, is just kind of starting out um, in collecting the data. So it's a wide variety, as you can see. So as we, um, we have Maryland's gonna, gonna take the lead on the next uh, question, or on that question, and maybe they can elaborate maybe on some of their, uh, their data. Um, we've been, I guess, in this latest version of business plan uh, performance measures, we've been probably about 10 years, and those measures seem to get tweaked every every few years, try to get reduced to reduce the number of measures we're, we're actually tracking. Um, we, we've had, um, you know, MBI data probably in an electronic form back to mid-90s. So we do have, you know, structurally deficient postings and that data back, but we've been reporting on it probably for the last... Um, 10 years. We break it down into three subgroups. We look at, um, basically look at SD, structurally deficient and weight restricted posted for NHS bridges, um, the entire system, and then our small structures, the bridges that are less than 20 feet, so. Okay. Well, Massachusetts, be behind you. Uh, we use both um, structural deficiency as well as health index as our performance measures. On the structural deficiency side, uh, we have been tracking both uh, the SD count uh, as well, um, more recently, uh, percent uh, deck that's structurally deficient. I would say uh, the reporting on the SD count uh, started in the early 90s and um, uh, we continue to do, do that uh, up to this date. We have a monthly report that's generated uh, from our data inventory collection system that distributed to managers and supervisors. Um, as far as health index, um, since health index is related to core elements and uh, the quality of uh, the data collection there is not, uh, at least for Massachusetts, is not as, um, has not been as good as uh, condition rating. Uh, so uh, I would say for the last 10 years we've been looking at health index and we feel there is a level of reliability there. Um, so you may use uh, health index for one of your performance measures or you're, you're starting we, to use we, that? We, we do. We look at it when we select candidates mm -hmm. uh, for uh, capital improvements right, or, right. you know, preservation programs. Okay. Okay. Um, New Hampshire. Doug's all the way over there. Uh, like I said before, in New Hampshire, a bridge is a 10-foot span or more, so, and we have been collecting data on red list bridges or SD bridges, if you would, uh, what we call a red list uh, since the mid-70s, um, and that's by number, not by area. So. Uh, and we, we cannot go back a long ways on area, and we can only go back to uh, about six years or so reliably on, um, you know, national highway system area, so. And, and these performance measures we're talking about here aren't necessarily the ones under the rulemaking, which will be deck area. These are just your performance measures and how long you've been collecting them. So you, you know, you've been collecting them for a long time, so. Okay, very good. Okay, third question. Do the local bridge owners in your state use the same measures? So we're gonna start off with New Jersey. Actually, before I go to New Jersey, here's the summary of the answers, I'm sorry. Um, you can get, we can move the mic while we're discussing that. Uh, we have uh, three yeses, they use the same. Um, four, sometimes some of the uh, locals are, but not all of them. Um, one's not sure, and three, they do not use those, so. 
Go ahead. All set? Yeah. All right. So yes, New Jersey uh, local bridge owners do use the same performance measures that we have. In fact, the derivative of Pontus that we're using, it's called COMBIS, stands for County Minor Bridge Inventory System. Uh, so there's a big push to get the counties on the same page as us. Uh, I'm not sure so much about the local municipalities that own the bridges, but the counties for sure are using the same measures that we do. Okay, so you do have counties and, and municipalities? Correct. Okay. New York? We also have um, counties and municipalities, and they follow the same measures that we do, um, which basically we're tracking, um, you know, uh, flags, percent deficient, um, and then the good, fair, and poor. Okay. Uh, Pennsylvania, Justin. So. Uh, our locals are measured, but they're not held to any standard. So we keep the same measurements as uh, uh, we do for the state. However, there's no um, uh, impacts for uh, variances in those measures. They can have horrific numbers. It doesn't really matter. There's no, uh, um, uh, how do I say this? There's no, we'd like to know what's going on, but we don't um, uh, manage them based on those measures. Okay, as far as um, I know a lot of States sometimes they have a program for the local agencies, at least for federal funds. Do you have anything like that, uh, that you actually have a special program to help fund some of the local bridge work? We do. Um, and so these measures don't have any, any bearing on that? They don't. Okay. Okay. Okay, very good. Next uh, question, number four. How do your bridge performance measures compare with those bridge performance measures proposed in the NPRM? We had some discussion earlier about that, and answers to that is six of them said they compare, um, four said they don't compare, and one is not sure. So um, we'll start uh, with Rhode Island. I think our performance measure, they are in line with, uh, they are in line like we have used seven plus uh, as a good for uh, four and less poor. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, we, we have like uh, measurement indicators uh, that compare to the performance, you know, generally. But we're still updating all our performance measures still on, in the process. Still a work in progress. Yes. Okay. Vermont. I think our performance measures are online. I think um, we're going to be developing some new performance measures um, to include preventive maintenance. And a lot of the bridges, our, 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 pro, our um, group of bridges are broken into interstate, state, and, and local. And there's about 2,800 bridges total, and 1,500 of those are local. So we don't, we don't have responsibility for maintenance on those. Those do qualify for, for federal funds. Um, but to do a real, you know, to, to have them come along with the performance measure that we're going to use for maintenance is, is going to be a struggle. But um, we are going to track it. So. OK. Um, going back to Connecticut. I think you've heard some of my comments earlier when I raised a question and concerns about some things. Yes. And the definition of a state of good repair in our performance measures is based on a, you know, the one to nine rating. But there's a slight difference between the traditional structurally deficient definition and the poor definition which proposed by the rulemaking. Okay. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And we've calculated our percentage of the condition state for, in that condition state for the rulemaking for the deck area weighted, whereas in each bridge is a single unit is, we're still looking at it as a five. Okay. So your good goes down to five? We, we have it down either it's in, if you're looking at two, it's good, or f we did not leave that gap in between. Okay. Okay. I understand. So you don't... You don't really have a poor, I guess. We have a poor, but we do not. Uh, I'm sorry, you don't have a fair. We don't have no a fair. fair. Okay. Okay. Um, next question is, are bridge performance measures used to prioritize bridge needs and identify gap in funding? And also in conjunction with that, has the use of performance measures been effective in securing additional bridge funds? 
So responses to that were that uh, as far as identifying gaps in funding, yes, eight out of the uh, 11 said uh, that they did do that, as well as um, uh, five out of the 11 actually said it, it was effective for gathering more funds for the program. So uh, we'll start off with uh, Delaware. Um, in regards to the first question, well, I guess both questions, um, I said yes, uh, sort of to both questions. Uh, in regards to the first one, um, we don't directly use the performance measure to prioritize the bridge needs, but for our prioritization process, if we're not meeting our performance standards, um, looking at that and determining do we need to modify the prioritization process or what do we need to do so we can meet our uh, performance measures. Um, sort of, we have used it to sort of identify gaps in funding. Um, in regards to the second part of the question, um, yeah, we have used the performance measures. I guess the performance measures have allowed us to place more emphasis on bridges and say, you know, here's our, here's our performance measures in order for us to meet this, along with forecasting out and, and bridge needs over the next 20 years and what that's gonna cost. It's allowed us to, uh, Definitely a lot more emphasis on bridges. Um, not that we get everything we ask for, but we definitely don't usually have a problem getting funding for our bridge program. So um, it, I think it definitely has helped. It's not the only thing, but it has helped. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Maine? <laughs> oh, we absolutely uh, use the performance measures in our prioritization. Uh, that's where we fine tune it a little bit better when, when I gave the example about the deck, you know, depending where it is. And, uh, and as far as uh, procuring extra funds, <clears throat> it, uh, we've used it most, the first time we used it was in 2007 after the Minnesota collapse, Maine Department of Transportation, the, the bridge community developed a, uh, a report called Keeping Our Bridges Safe. And uh, in essence, the, the big one, what everybody looks at as far as a transportation committee within the legislature is structurally deficient. I mean, it just raises a flag and you see what the trend is and the, the trend, you know, you, you're, you're, uh, the trend goes down, you know, a few years after the funding level and, and with, after a big bond issue, after big bonding and years of bonding. Uh, we went through that iteration again. Uh, our new commissioner said, well, let's, where are we today in 2014? Uh, back then, we actually used the good, fair, poor uh, scenario. And what we found is that we had a change of 4% in our fair bridges, 2% to the good and 2% to the bad. But that was, uh, that was that's number of bridges. Uh, I would say that the the two percent that went to the to the poor were probably on your lower uh, quarter priorities, and the bridges that went to the good are probably on the higher quarter priorities, and those higher co uh, those ones on the higher priorities are probably much larger structures. So when you look at it by deck area, that uh, would be better off. But uh, we absolutely use them both. For both ways, and you were you've been able to get additional funds based. Oh on the yes, uh, the first time the in 2007 we actually procured uh, an additional uh, 60 million dollars a year. Our, our normal funding was 60, 65 million dollars a year expenditure, and we got an extra 60 million dollars for four years. You know now the now it's going down. The trend of the graph is going down. And then the last few years, now it's trending back up. So then we go back to the legislature. We're saying, oh, wait a minute, we're trending back up. Plus, you know, we need, within the, the 2014 report, it actually talks about uh, what we really wanted was 135 million, uh, whereas we had uh, 75 million uh, dedicated so far. We wanted an additional 60 million for, for bond money. Uh, but they didn't give it to us. I think they gave us 35 million, but at the same time, they want us to have the, the graph go down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But everybody knows, and that's a buzzword that, you know, with all the, this whole ro entire room is, gee, you know, let's preserve our bridges. You know, and one of the things going back to continue that, that uh, uh, we were talking about earlier, that I would rather spend monies to keep a bridge in a condition state six 
you know, if I can keep four or five bridges in a con condition state six and have one bridge drop from a seven to a six, I'll take that trade off any day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Marilyn. Um, we, you know, we've done, used a structurally deficient um, measure pretty successfully over the last 10 years to reduce the number of structurally deficient bridges in the state from probably in 2000, around 150 to our current number of 69. And I mean, it's, it's helped a simple graph that's showing, you know, your number of SD bridges going down, you know, correlated to how your funding has increased has, has shown, you know, that has kept those funding levels up. It's demonstrated that we're using the money effectively. Um, and even in times where, you know, budgets are tough, they were finding money to keep the bridge funding, you know, at certain levels and even when other programs weren't spending their allocation, you know, they would come to us and ask us, can you spend the money? And Rod would, you know, often put a lot of, you know, maintenance contracts or maintenance work out, mm -hmm. um, minor rehab to spend that money you know, at the end of the fiscal year. So it's just been a good demonstration for us of, you know, you give us money, we use it and we do good things with it. Right. And they can show that to the public. So. Okay, very good. Uh, just a quick question for pretty much the states, or just everybody. One of the things we're talking about here is structurally deficient, that term, structurally deficient. Now, I know we're trying to, we're trying to shy away from the term structurally deficient because it, it, it really is a, has a bad connotation to it where bridges are, are you know, they're, they're in kind of bad shape, but they're not really that bad, and it almost sounds like you're gonna, they're going to collapse or something. So um, give me a show of hands on who would prefer to have, keep the term structurally deficient versus re, or come up with a new term which is similar. Who wants to keep structurally deficient? You like structurally deficient, okay. You like structurally deficient, or would you, as opposed to rather have um, poor condition, poor condition, or red list is good. How about red list? What, you used to have screamers in, in or something in, in uh, yeah, we got rid of that. yeah. Okay, uh, next, next uh, question is, has the yes, use, yes. Make, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, with these performance measures and, and, and the focus on, the, on the, you know, the poor and the good, and then we talked about the yellow in the middle, um, with all the data we're collecting, especially now getting into element level, um, even with component level, sh shouldn't we be tracking, you know, how fast bridges or elements or components move through the yellow and get, and get to the red? Wouldn't that be something? Because the, the rate of flow of projects or bridges down to a four is what causes, is what causes the angst here. So um, you can, you know, you can, re you can get 10 of them off that list, but 15 come on. Right. So you're not, you're not, you're not, you know, you're, you're the orifice there is too, too big, you know, so. Yeah. I don't know if they, any thought has been. Well, I that. think the thought behind the performance measures, having a good and having a poor, as opposed to just having a poor and tracking poor is, is that. It, it's a situation that you want to increase your good and reduce your poor. Right. So it, it kind of inversely works with the idea that you're going to be adjusting the fares too. Okay. You know, so that's, so I, I agree with you. The situation is, is you don't want to, keep you know, letting things get worse all the time. You want to be able to track it. And this will be, during the performance measures, there will be targets that are set and tracking be done. Because that, that's your, that, to me, that's your preventive maintenance yes. work is right in there. You're not going to spend a lot of money on the force. Right. right. I mean, it's, you can track it through your asset management plan, really. And that's all the performance measures they're going to be incorporated somehow in your asset management plan, basically, I think. And that's, that's where you, be, you can kind of like track it there if you want to show progress, really, basically. Okay, next, uh, you want another, one more comment? Yeah. Okay. Over the last few years, we've been looking at our fair rated bridges, and we use any, uh, condition uh, five, any one, one of the major elements rated a five, we consider fair. Um, so we, we were with this exercise, well, you know, our SD bridges are going down, but we got this big number of bridges, you know, say I think it was about 500 of our 2,500 were in fair condition, had one element rated a five. And I said, well, let's look at the ones that have had an element rated 
uh, five or more for 10 years, or f you know, five for 10 years or more. He said, you know, this, this could be this big bubble that's coming. So we, we went for this exercise, and um, what we have noticed as you keep adding the year is that it's, you know, we always assume five, you know, 10 or more is ready to become SD. And then all of a sudden we start looking, well, that average just seems to be going up. Now, we did an exercise where on our bridge tour where we go look at, we look at a certain number of our bridges every year. That's how we develop our program. And we looked at a lot of these fives for tens. And what we were seeing is, well, we go out there, look, Remedial has a steel repairs or they have a concrete uh, repair job ready to go. So these what were once five, you know, fives, they're getting a lot of rehab work. So, you know, now we're kind of presenting that this is helping maintain these bridges, that the preventative maintenance or the minor rehabilitation is, is being effective. In Delaware, uh, we've always had the SD performance measure for 20 or 25 years, but we more recently, I think it was 2010 or 2011, actually created the FAIR performance measure. And just for the reasons that you're describing is, you know, it seemed like we were kind of waiting more to when that bridge got structured deficient, we need to get to it sooner. And so that's why we have the we went to the fair uh, performance measure back in I think 2010 or 2011. Okay. Good following up what Dennis had just said, it depends on the inspector. Yes. Having been in the inspection game for a long time prior to moving to where I am now, I've always heard it said a five is a safe rating. Yes. <laughs> okay. Can we move on to number six? Okay. Um, has the use of performance measures led to improved structural performance or longevity? And does your reporting mechanism, dashboard, or other means illustrate the performance improvements achieved over time? So uh, the responses to that were, uh, for the first question about um, improved structural performance or longevity, four states said they actually have. Um, four states said they didn't, and three weren't sure at this point, and then um, does your reporting mechanism dashboard illustrate the performance improvements achieved over time? And most of the states have said yes, they do. So um, starting off uh, with responses is Massachusetts. I, I believe so. Um, for one thing, what the performance measures does, it allows you to go in and argue for more money to fix some of the problems that you have. But also, it helps you focus your efforts on those uh, bridges that are worst or identified worst in order to meet uh, you know, a given goal or a performance measure. So indirectly, it, it affects the performance of the, of the inventory also. Right. OK. OK. All the way across to New Hampshire. Uh, earlier on the slide, I showed you that our red list number of red list bridges has gone up for the last four or five years. So uh, it's hard for me to say that we're it's making a difference in New Hampshire. Um, you know, w um, condition has declined uh, recently. Uh, we we really haven't had a change in our uh, funding for a while, but. I like to think that we're we got the right approach to maintenance uh, and preservation, but it oftentimes takes a long time for those to show up with bridges. So, okay. New Jersey. So New Jersey feels that uh, the use of performance measures has improved the longevity of our structures by using the NBI ratings uh, mm -hmm. to select our structures that need work, and then combined with the work order system that we outlined in our presentation. That, that allows for a greater communication between us and structural, and it also creates a history of which bridges have the most work going on on them. Um, some bridges have many work orders, and some only have one or two. Um, but that online system had, was only created in 2010. Um, so before that, there really wasn't much um, history on the bridges. So a few years from now, we'll have a better answer for you. OK. Very good. Okay, the next question was about uh, if you have an internet site or public document. I'm going to go over that at the end. So um, this, these are all the different internet sites, and I'll come back to these, and, and we'll actually show what a couple of them look like. So the next question um, was question eight, which is, do you have an asset management plan for bridges? Um, New York, on the bridge maintenance side of the house, no. Um, 
we're pretty much chasing flags. So that's kind of our asset management plan. Um, the structure side of the house, design, um, construction, I don't believe they do. This one was kind of out of my realm of right. knowledge. Okay, um, but eventually with the asset management rulemaking and things that uh, an asset management plan will I hear will agile develop. assets will help us tremendously. There you go. <laughs> okay, um, get it. just looking at the slide as the response is that um, about half the group was had their asset management uh, plan for bridges under development and, and four actually had something on board right now. So um, Pennsylvania? So we're working right now diligently to uh, have something in place for structures. Um, we have something in place for bridges. Uh, and once we have something in place for structures, there's then a plan to move to an overall asset management system, but one step at a time. So for bridge maintenance, we track what's going on. But that's from the maintenance side. Um, there's not really a, a, a system in place that will allow us to do uh, predictive maintenance issues. It only tracks what maintenance we tell it to. So um, yeah. We're in the process right now of uh, gathering the requirements for an asset management system for Bridge, and we've reflected that in our TAMP. Okay. Okay. And that you think your TAMP is uh, up to date with what was in the rulemaking? I don't know if you have any op any perspective on that. I, I do actually. I've okay. been managing the TAMP since its inception. So, okay. um, as long as the rulemaking is not too far off from what we've seen, I think that we'll be in a good position. Okay. Um, All things considered, uh, and there's a lot of questions still out there, but I think uh, within reason, uh, I think that we've tried to address all the issues that we've seen already listed. I mean, our TAMP is like 700 pages or so. So it, it's pretty comprehensive. Right. Okay, sounds good. Um, Rhode Island. Rhode Island have a separate unit uh, for asset management and they f we feed them the information what is, uh, collecting the information is from bridge and inspection groups. And we started not too long ago, so we're in the process to get all the information. But yes, we do have an asset management program. Okay. Okay. Lastly, before we talk, start looking at the uh, internet sites, are, are your bridge performance measures tied to your asset management plan? You know, whether that's the current um, performance measures that's really what we're looking at for this answer, but um, in the future, the performance measures from the rulemaking are going to need to be tied in with the asset management plan also. So we're um, going um, to Vermont. Yes, our, our asset management plan is in, it's in development, but it, it's, there's, we're going to be connecting these two things as we move forward. Yep. Okay. And uh, just an overall response from the group that, that Nine of the states felt like they were going, they have their uh, performance measures tied to their asset management plan. Okay, and we're going to Connecticut and then Delaware. Well, again, like others, our asset management plan is being developed for all major assets within the agency, including bridges. In Delaware, our uh, performance measures are tied to our asset management plan. Um, I mean, uh, I guess essentially our asset managed plan is kind of three-pronged. I mean, you're trying to reduce the number of structurally deficient bridges, trying to prevent your fair bridges from becoming structurally deficient, and then trying to get some of your uh, fair bridges in back in good condition. So they are tied to the asset management plan. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any uh, anything they want to add at this point? It seems that Delaware and New Jersey have a good grasp on these asset management plans, but is there any other states in uh, the U.S. that really have a fine-tuned plan that you know, could be maybe taken as a model? Yeah, basically all the information is there. It goes through a Federal Highway website, the Asset Management website, the Office of Asset Management, and they have, they have actually, I think, four, I believe so, I think. Correct me if that right, Jeff, over there, he knows better. Uh, I think four, uh, uh, four temps out there, you can download them actually. New York, Wisconsin, uh, well, some, somebody, definitely New York, one of them from Northeast. 
Pennsylvania also. Okay, Pennsylvania there. So they still from Northeast if you're looking. So just to go to their website, Federal Highway website. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay, well, let's go to the websites. Hopefully they'll work. Um, let's try Delaware's. Okay, Delaware has a dashboard that uh, talks about bridges and pavements as far as condition. They have a, a couple other different things, but um, we just break it down by the type of road, and um, we do have historical data. Um, I think there's another tab or another link to get there that shows you the history. You want me to hit that? It, it didn't work last time, so I kind of want to say no. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, see, it, it brings up the pavement. Okay. Thanks, Dennis. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll go back to bridges. How about that? And you want to explain how your good fare poor is calculated? Would you already do that? The yeah. numbers? Uh, our fare is, is MBI 5. It's, this is number of bridges, not deck area, obviously. Um, fare is 5, as I stated before. Um, poor, 4 or less, and then goods, 6 through 9. And then it, it, it takes account deck, super, sub, or culvert rating. OK. Yes. I've never seen this page. <laughs> 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 no, I, I have. I saw it actually opened it last week. <laughs> I think that's just a compilation right Do you right want there. the CSL? Sure. Th those are the different parameters for condition, uh, safety, and service. A lot, a lot of the, like I said, a lot of the bridge stuff was the, the, the I call them the dirt and tar guys were the first ones out of the chute and kind of developed the mold, and then they tried to jam the bridge guys into it. And it didn't work. It was painful at times. It really was. Uh, but it's a good system, and it's a good thing to go by. And as far as the, the, the maintenance uh, management plan, pardon? What's the matter? As, as far as our maintenance management plan, at that was kind of the fallout of this and how I've, I've dealt with the asset management plan on our side is developing levels of service for elements. Uh, for example, uh, if a joint lasts 10 years, you should re replace 10% of your joints a year, that type of thing. And that's how I hope to promote and, and uh, meet some of these other goals. One thing that uh, Doug had mentioned too before is that uh, when we were looking for, for more mo bond money, the politicians look at, okay, we'll just kind of keep that line flat, you know, and, and when you talk about, well, the need for preservation, if you go and you spend those funds, it's a long time before that needle moves, but it's doing the right thing. Uh, and that's one of the things that we've tried to explain. Any, any where you want me to go to, or are you good with that? You want me to go to it? Is there anything else anywhere you want me to click on? That's good. I believe I believe that uh, also there's a there's a website there that has a lot of our reports. Uh, you may find them interesting. The keeping them, our bridges safe. It's Cobbs K O B S. There was one in 2007, one in 2014, and and it kind of describes the gambit of uh, the capital expenditures, uh, the gains and losses, and uh, conditions and and so forth. Kind of a, a game plan to present to uh, the decision makers on where we are and, and what we need to do in the future. Yeah, I don't know where that is, but you know where it would be? Here? Oh, here it is, 14, keeping our bridges safe. Hopefully it's not too big. Uh, this report, it was, uh, it was authored and com comprised of uh, engineers from throughout the department, uh, bridge management, bridge maintenance, uh, uh, design engineers, uh, bridge contractors, FHWA, uh, consultants, 
uh, we, we had a nice cross cut and Good. added a lot of value to the report. Yeah, it's nice. Okay. Let's see if I can open up another one. Okay, this is, I guess, a list of all your red lists, Bridges? Yeah, that's the list that we put out annually. It talks about which bridges. I, I showed that picture earlier, that page earlier. Mm -hmm. If you keep going down, it shows all the bridges that came on the red list, all the ones that went off. And then there's other, there's other links in there, too, that describe each bridge in each town and what, it, what the crossings are and so forth. This, this looks similar to Maryland's. Hey, this looks similar to your report for um, your bridge tour, doesn't it? Okay. A anything else you want me to highlight? Just that by putting this information out to the public, they're aware of red list bridges, what they are, you know, they understand they don't want them in their towns. So uh, we have, you know, we do think that we might be able to get funding by publishing this, but once again, it's worse first and not necessarily where we want to go with our maintenance program. Okay. Uh, we put together a fact book every year um, to present to the legislature. And it outlines the status, where we've gone for the last few years and where we want to go and um, kind of highlight um, our, our, our current efforts and where we need, maybe need help in funding. So <laughs> um, there you go. And it's, it's the bridge. This is the whole fact book for the agency, but the bridge section is in there. Um, page 38, I think. Yeah, yeah we, just, we just update the data on the population, and um, we talk a bit about the culverts in there, and um, Jason talked about his culverts, and we have, we have a lot of culverts, a lot of the uh, coral gate metal plate culverts that were put in, they're around 35, 35, 40 years old, that are all failing, and um, very few of ours are under less than 10 to 12 feet of fill, and some are under 50 to 60 feet of fill, mm. so... Um, we try to line those, we can't get away with that because in a lot of cases, because they're not hydraulically large enough or um, we have to provide AOP. So. Um, okay, here's your re restricted stru structures. I guess your load, load posted structures, is that what those are? I guess so, I'm not, it's I'm small. not that familiar with this, this version of the, of the report, but. Here's SD and FO. Yeah. Yeah, it shows our the current, there's one chart in there, shows our current percentages that were down. Um, let's see. A couple more pages there. There you go. Is that it? Page, uh, page 43 is a good okay. chart that shows the um, next page. Right, that right there. That kind of that shows the picture, as far as I'm concerned. The, the blue is our goals. And... Um, the darker, the 2014 is the darker um, orange there shows where we set our goals and, we, and we adjusted them once because they were too, too high um, or too low, whatever way you want to look at it. And, um, but the point, the, you can see where we really came down from the um, 2004 and before where the percentages were up around 20% deficient. So, but that was all based on the slug of money that we put into these, these bridges and um, also, accelerated, accelerated bridge construction has helped get those jobs out quickly. No, you know, no right away, minimal involvement with utilities and environmental permits. So, um, the goal is going to be now is, as there are still bridges that are out there, they're going to come in. Is with, and without that money, we're going to and keep those bridges in the middle of the yellow, um, healthy with with some preventive maintenance. So, okay, very good. Okay. Um. Anybody else want to share their uh, website? I think we're, we're good. You got a good cross section. All the websites are in the handout that you have. These presentations will be available on the TSP2 website. You can go right to this presentation and probably link on these things when you're back in your office if you want to look at some of this information. 
So um, on your agenda, we have at 4.45 to 5, roundtable recap and focus. I don't think we really need to do that. So um, can we just take a break till the 5 o'clock start?